Hey everybody, I'm the Pigglesworth, and what you're about to watch is a show that I recorded April 9th, 2015 on Beam.pro. It is a live stream where I answered a very often asked question, what kind of computer do I use and what kind of software do I use when I'm doing my shows? So, if you want to watch my live streams as I do them, you can look at the link down in the description to follow me at Beam.pro. This is just a pre-recorded show. So, without further ado, let's get on with the show. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started with tonight's episode. Um, tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about all of the hardware that I use when I'm doing my different episodes, when I do my YouTube stuff. Um, a lot of people have been asking that question. What are all the things that you use to make your shows? And I thought, you know what would be fun? Let's go in a creative world, and I'm going to try and like quickly build some of the stuff that I use. I don't know how well I'm going to do this. There's like... I'm going to look y'all right in the eye and be honest, okay? There's like zero preparation for this evening as far as like builds and stuff. Usually I try and do some stuff in creative mode just so I know what I'm going to do. Tonight we're going to wing it. We're just going to like go with it. So if I build something and it looks just a little funky, you know, we'll just go with that. Um, now what I am going to do also is, and I'll go ahead and get this in my inventory now just so I don't forget I'm going to use signs. I'm going to use a lot of signs. And the reason why is I wrote down on a sheet of paper all the different hardware and stuff that I'm using. And so I'm going to write that out on the signs. So that way, maybe if English is not your first language, or if I'm pronouncing something very strange, you can see what the word is. And um, you, you, know, you could also write it down if you're wanting to research that and find out for yourself what it is. Let's get started with the show. We're going to start talking about all of the devices and all of the equipment that I use to do my videos. And the first thing that I need to do is I need to build a computer. And we're just going to make a silly, crazy looking little computer. It's not going to mean much of anything here. <laughs> so let's see. Um, oh, there we go. We'll make that our processor. Okay, so boop, we're just going to pop that down. And the first thing that I'm going to talk about is what kind of processor I'm using. I actually use two different computers when I'm, uh, not always when I'm recording, but uh, my main desktop, this is the uh, processor that I use. Now, don't ask me to explain too much about this because I don't fully understand it myself. But yes, I'm using an AMD Phenom 9950 quad core with a 2.6 hertz. And I think I've had this computer for about three, three and a half years now. So when I got it, that was like top of the line, super awesome. Um, nowadays, I know quad cores like silly. Um, as far as I know of, I think you can get like you really want to go over the top, you can get like a 16 core, I think, or something like that. Um, but let's see here. We're going to go from here. So when you come out of the... Oh, yeah, because it's daylight. I'm like, wait a minute. Where's the redstone coming from? <laughs> so we're going to... Let's see. We're going to... want. Wait, you go down. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight redstone repeaters are going to represent the 8 gigabytes of RAM that are in my computer. So I use 8 gigs of RAM. Now, to be honest with you, I cannot for the life of me remember what type of RAM it is. I know that there's a bunch of different kind you can get. Um, can't remember. And I, I'm i a big fan of using Windows XP. Um, where should we put that? Nope, not yet. Not yet. But, yeah, I'll put down a sign later when I get to the software part of what I'm using. But right now I'm using Windows 7, the 64-bit OS, because that makes a lot of the stuff that I'm using just run a lot more efficient. One of the things about XP, you could max out at 4 gigs of RAM. Well, I'm doing a lot of video editing and a lot of very intense stuff that needs memory. So I had to upgrade to a 64-bit OS so that I could use 8 gigs of RAM. 
Now, I know that I could go higher than that, but actually I think my motherboard will only handle 8 gigs because it's a little bit of an older motherboard. So that's what I'm stuck with for now. But let's see here. So we've got our processor and our RAM. And um, hmm, how do we do this? We're going to just go into here. That's going to pop over into here. And this is going to be the video card. That's probably going to be one of the most asked questions after the other two that I've shown. And I'm trying to talk, talk and type at the same time. And that's not always successful. <laughs> But this is the video card that I'm using, and I think, wait, wrong number, 28, 48 megabyte. Those are the specs on that. So I'm using an AMD Radeon High Def 6900, and it has uh, 2048 megs on the card. This card's a really good card. I upgraded to it sometime December 2014, I think it was. Just because the older card I was using, it was seriously on its last leg. So we got the, uh, the processor, the RAM, the video card. Now from there, we go to memory. And let's see, what could be memory? Hmm. Diamond. We'll do diamond as, as memory. Not memory, hard drive. Hard drive size. So my hard drive, and you know what? I know people are always talking about 70. Whoop. Always talking about piggy typing the wrong thing is what that is. Come on. Oh, I hit my number lock. 7200 RPM. And it is a one terabyte hard drive. I'll be honest with you. I've never seen where I could buy anything that was under a 7200 RPM hard drive. Um, Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I'm pretty sure that something out there is slower, but I've always heard that if you've got it at that RPM, that it'll run fast enough that you can pick up the uh, video that you're recording while you're recording it. So, notebook drives are usually 5,400 RPM. Hey, night. Cool. And uh, out to hockey again. Boy, Thursday night must be your hockey night. I tell you what. Shouldn't the HDD be a chest? Hmm. That's actually a good idea. You know what? Boop, boop. We're going to just fix it right now. Because, <laughs> yes, the hard drive. All the stuff gets stored in the chest. So, boop. There we go. We'll just go back to 7200 RPM, 1 terabyte. Now, when I got started, 1 terabyte seemed like a lot of memory. I was like, there's no way I'll ever fill up a terabyte. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I'm like going through memory like crazy. And so what that means is, let's see, we're going to, uh-oh, we'll just, there we go, bridge the gap. I am going to use the dispenser. You are now my external hard drive. That's right. I'm using an external hard drive, and I have two different hard drives. I have an older three terabyte external and a two terabyte external. Now the three terabyte has more just like my personal stuff and just, you know, main backups. The two terabyte, I started this year off fresh with a two terabyte external drive. And so that way, as I do all my filming, once I get it posted on YouTube and I know that it's uploaded, it's safe, it's posted, everything's good to go. I take that file from that episode and I dump it on that external drive so that my main hard drive stays somewhat empty. At least manageably empty, I should say. So, that is the way I store all that mess. And we have got to, uh, we've got to rig up a monitor, don't we? Because y'all need to know what kind of monitor I'm using. While I build a quick little monitor here, I want y'all to type in chat what kind of monitor you think I'm using. And I'm going to look over real quick and see if anybody can guess. I have a feeling... None of y'all are going to be able to guess what kind of monitor I'm using. But you never, never know. There's always one little sneaky, sneaky in there that can figure it out. So let's see. Doop, doop, doop. We'll just do like that. And just pop some of that down. Oh, I should have put a painting down first behind it. I wonder if I can. We'll just do, 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 do. A little bit of sound effects for effect. <laughs> and break that, 
And I apologize if I'm using like bland looking stuff. Like I said, this is kind of last second, but let's see. This is probably one of the first times I've ever used paintings. Whoa, okay, so there we go. That's what we're watching. That little thing right there. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm going to look over in chat real quick and see if anybody could guess what kind of monitor I'm using. It's a 24-inch, a 50-inch, 27-inch View Sonic widescreen monitor. To, wow, that is pretty specific. To me. <laughs> a HAL 9000. If I was using a HAL 9000, we would all be in trouble. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so here's what I'm actually using. I'm not using a monitor. Now, I know y'all are all going like, oh, Piggy, that's a rigged game. What are you doing? Well, okay, so technically it is a monitor. And I will say that Superfoes got the closest. Uh, I don't know if I would be able to survive using a 50-inch, an Oculus. Oh, my gosh. I would love to be using an Oculus right now. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, Dr. XT, I'm using a TV. Exactly. Um, so what I'm using is a 32-inch Sony HD. It was a H. It was the first HD TV that we had bought, and um, loved it. When I hooked up my Xbox to it, there was like zero latency to it. If I told my character to look left, bam, he looked left. It was like super awesome TV. And then later on in life, we went ahead and bought a bigger TV, and we just graduated the uh, the Sony HD to be our computer monitor. Now, I have a smaller monitor. It's an Asus, like a, I don't know, a 25 or 27 inch. And that's my, yeah, you're, you're right, Superfoes. It might actually be a 36, maybe not a 32. It's pretty big, though. It's nice. It's very nice. Whenever I go to normal computer monitors now, I'm so spoiled. I, I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's not enough screen. What do I do? <laughs> but um, actually, believe it or not, when I'm doing video editing, I have my secondary monitor, which is my old computer monitor, and I dump a lot of extra things over there, like I can see my audio, um, what do you call them, the meter, the audio meter. It shows me what, if I'm maxing out my audio, and I drag over there also all the clips that I'm using, and I float around the, uh, the dockable thing that lets you do the video preview. So I move it back and forth between both monitors, but... It is very strange to only use to only use one monitor. It yeah, one it's crazy. Once you use two monitors and you get used to doing a lot of work with two monitors, going back to one, it takes a little getting used to. It's it's like you're so used to having all that extra real estate to look at and it's like it's almost like running two computers because you can run, you know, oh, I guess I should build another monitor, shouldn't I? Here we go. And we'll just make it a little smaller because it is a smaller monitor. Just like that. But being able to do that, I can have two different programs running. Like I can have Minecraft running and then I could have like, where in the world are the pictures? Oh, here we go. Okay. So I can have Minecraft running and I can have like a, um, a Windows preview or something. And I can be looking at an image of something I made on the second monitor and be replicating it on the first monitor. So that's always really nice. And it really does come in handy when you're doing a lot of video editing. Oh, I need to keep the sign. Signs everywhere, signs. Let's see who uh, in chat knows that song. <laughs> so we're going to put a 32 HD Sony. And then over here, can you put signs on glass? Wow, you can. Okay, learn something new. This is going to be an Asus, like, 20, not a 72, whew, a 27 inch. There we go. So that's my two monitors. And we got those rigged up as well. So let's see here. All right. Now the other important things that are going on, there's one more element inside my desktop. Where will we put this? Hmm. We got to make it look kind of fancy too. I don't want that. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I need. A note block. Let's see if y'all can figure out why I would need a note block. Oh, didn't make any noise, I guess, because I have to. There we go. Doop, doop. So, this is going to be an audio card. Now, I have an audio card on the uh, the motherboard, 
but I have a secondary card running in the background. And let's see if I can, okay, so an M, oh, wait, whoop, back that up, nope. <laughs> an M audio delta audio file. I don't know what that is I wrote. I wrote something. Oh, a one terabyte hard drive. Okay. So, yeah, so that is the sound card that I'm running. Now, some of y'all are probably like, oh, Piggy, why in the world do you have a sound card when you have a sound card? Well, kind of a long story. Actually, it's not a long story. It's a short story because we're going to change time. Set time day. You time set day. There, right where you belong. <laughs> So, before I started doing YouTube, um, I did video editing as a hobby, just a bunch of different stuff, you know, things that people would film at church, or just different things that I would, you know, friends would film and whatnot, I would edit them together just for fun, just to see if I could do it, and really found that I loved it. Well, something else that I've done for a hobby for years is I write music. I actually, for quite some time when I was younger, tried to start bands, um, recorded a few CDs, was trying to actually make a career in music, and just never could hit my stride, never could figure out, you know, what exactly I needed to do to start making decent money. Plus, when I was doing this, the digital age for music, the way it is now, did not exist. So, I'm giving away my age a little bit again there too, but I'm not going to say a number. Not yet. Piggy's still going to keep a few things secret. But, so when I was back recording music and stuff in a band, um, yeah, it was like cassette tapes and CDs and all that kind of crazy stuff, and we just couldn't get enough money going to make it worth my while. But over the years, I've still written music, still wanted to record music. And what I found out was if I bought a dedicated uh, audio card, this M Audio Delta, it was about 110 bucks or so. What was so awesome about it is it let me plug a small soundboard directly into it. So we're going to make our soundboard, if we can. Oh, that's not going to work. So, boop, we'll pop that down. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, unpreparation for the win. So, does that work? It'd be like a little mixing board? Yeah? Okay, so we're going to pop that down, and this is a Behringer X-E-N-Y X502. Y'all are going to have to look that up on Google. That's like all the information I could find on it. But basically what it is, it's a five-channel mixer. It's a very small mixer. I mean, it's like, for those of you who use standard form of measurement, this will make sense. It's like four inches by six inches and about an inch and a half tall. I do apologize, I don't know anything about metrics, so I can't convert that for you. It's a little bit bigger in the palm of your hand if you're an adult, adult male. Really small, but it is a super awesome mixer for what the price. I think I paid about 100 bucks for it at some music store. So with this mixer, has a preamp so I can plug a mic into it, and I'll get to the mics in a minute. We're running that into a sound card. This dedicated sound card has extremely low latency. It's like several milliseconds. I mean, it's like lightning fast. And what latency is, for those of you who don't know, it's how long a signal can go in here. Now, I'm sending an analog signal into a sound card that's converting it into a digital signal and then spitting it over here into the computer. The quicker that I can go blah, 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 and talk at this, and it ends up in the computer, the lower the latency. Latency is how long it takes for something to go from here to here. That's like the quick way of explaining it. I know there's a better way of explaining it, but I don't know what it is. To be honest with you, I just, I don't know. So we'll have to go with that. But suffice it to say, I am able to input sound through my mixing board through my audio card into a piece of software that I can record both me and Miss Piggy talking and nothing else. And that's really cool because that gives me the power to use my software to record Minecraft with the audio of Minecraft completely separate from my voice. So if I mess up something I'm talking about, I can go back and re-record it. 
if I'm recording and say a bunch of zombies show up and they're all like, and you can't hear me talk because of the zombies. Well, when I'm editing, I just whoop, turn them down. Nobody hears them. So that's awesome. That really helps. So let's see here. So we got that. We got that. Oh, yeah. Microphones. Now, here's what's crazy, okay? When I was first getting into all this stuff, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to actually try and build a microphone. Let's go for it. We'll get some different colored wool here. And we're going to act like this is a cable running into it. And check this out. We're going to have two cables running into it. And the reason why is because I actually have two different microphones. Now, I'm not recording with two different microphones. Let's see, can he do it? Can he do it on camera? I don't know. Does that look like a microphone? Nope. <laughs> Oh, that's like the silliest looking microphone in the world, isn't it? But there's a reason why they have two different shapes. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and... Nope. Wrong color. Just pop this down. Try and make that look a little better. You know, I mean, come on, guys. We are in Minecraft, right? So it has to look somewhat good, right? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that, that little bit more resembles. Very short little stem on it. But, <laughs> so here's what's going on. I have two different microphones that I use. These microphones, now when I first got started, I noticed a lot of people were talking about using uh, like a blue something USB type microphone. And they're pretty expensive. I thought about it at first, but I realized, hey, I've got microphones. I've been doing music stuff. Come on now. So I gave them a shot. They worked really well. Believe it or not, y'all probably can't hear it. But in the other room, there's a loud TV going on. You can't hear it right now, can you? You can't even hear me using my keyboard, can you? That's because the microphone I'm using is a studio mic built for vocals. It is a, and I'm sure as I type it, y'all are going to be like, yeah, I've heard of that one for any old audio files out there. So a Shure SM58. That's like your standard run-of-the-mill, everyday, been around since like the 50s probably, studio microphone. And this one, it's a Shure also. It is a, I think I'm spelling Shure right, a Shure SM57. 57s are like the workhorse microphone of the recording industry. You can record guitar amps, drums, vocals, I mean, you name it. The SM57 is like uber awesome at it. And the 58 is seriously awesome as well. But these microphones, they they work so good. And uh, at most music stores, you can buy them for like on sale under 100 bucks with a tripod and an XLR cable. XLR cable is like a three-prong cable, not the quarter-inch jack like what you would use on a guitar. And so what happens is on my mixing board, I have two channels coming in. Uh, this is, of course, what I'm talking about when me and Miss Piggy record. So what I do is I talk into the SM57 going into a channel, and I pan it all the way to the right. So I'm recording in stereo. The SM58 is Miss Piggy talking, and I pan it all the way to the left in stereo. And so what happens is when I go back and mix it, say I coughed and Miss Piggy was talking, well I can just boop, I can mute that second where I coughed and Miss Piggy keeps talking and the audio stays great. No one ever hears me make that little cough noise and interrupt the wife. She gets to talk and vice versa. If like she bumps something and I'm in the middle of talking, you never hear it because I just boop, cut it off. So that really helps a lot when you're doing a bunch of recording and when you get to the point of editing and you need to control your sounds and all the stuff that's going on to kind of push it from that, just that basic video, whoop, up to, you know, production value up here instead of down here. So let's see, what else do I have for equipment? I have one other piece of equipment. I'm actually using it right now. Oh, what's this? Only the best for Piggy. <laughs> Blue Yeti. Yes, Dragon Master. That's what it was. Um, 
Blue Yeti. A lot of people use Blue Yetis. Um, but I just decided, you know what? I'm going to go with the stuff I've already got. Why go buy more stuff? Very good pick. What, all of this? That's a good pick? <laughs> this is like the craziest looking computer studio thing ever. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, what I'm looking at when I look at chat is the, the link in the chat. Oh, the link in chat. Oh, yes, the sound the soundboard. Yeah. Um, okay, so over here, we're just going to build this real quick because this is just a little itty-bitty device. See if anybody can guess what I'm building before I can get it finished. No, not a keyboard. Not a keyboard, but it does have a keyboard, and that failed. Oh, well, this will work. There you go. A laptop. I'm using a laptop. So that way, me and Miss Piggy, we can play together at the same time. And so that way, while I'm doing this in this world, I can look over and I can see chat. So here are the basic specs for the laptop. It's an Intel Core i5 CPU. I have no idea what this means, but this is what it said. So 2.4 hertz, gigahertz. And it has 4 gigs of RAM. And we're running a 64-bit OS on it as well. Not gram. <laughs> 4 gigabytes of RAM. There we go. That makes more sense. So right now, whenever I play on StormCloud, which is the modded server for RainCloud, this poor little thing just about starts to catch itself on fire. I mean, it's... It's pretty old. It served me well, but it's just about ready to be uh, retired. I still use it for a lot of stuff, but for the modded, it can't really hold its own anymore. And I'm thinking about building a second computer so that I can start doing more uh, stuff like that. Also, so I'm not always hogging the computer. Miss Piggy can play on the one I'm on right now. I can play on another one and do video editing. We can hang out together a lot more. So, I think for the most part, that's going to be all the hardware that I'm using. Now, whoop, that was a weird lag spike. So, I'm just going to pop down a few signs here. This is going to give you the idea of the software that I'm using. And then I think for the most part, we're going to call this show quits. As far as the part that's on YouTube is concerned. All of you all stick around. I'm going to do my little outro in a second. Then I'm going to stop and we're just going to chat. I'm going to look at chat. I'm not going to do anything on screen. But we're just going to hang out and talk, okay? So, and I know y'all are typing some stuff, and I definitely want to answer the questions y'all got going on. So I'm going to do this with the software, and then we're going to get on with the talky-talky part, okay? So, boop. Here's the first thing, the most important thing. This is the capture software that I'm using. Now, I know a lot of people, they... they their software that they like to use and their software that they hate. This is a software that I found that works awesome for me. I've never had it go bad. I've never had a corrupted file. I know some people have, so it is possible. But so far, this software has treated me well, and that is good old Fraps. Believe it or not, Piggy's using Fraps. Now, this thing gives out some huge file sizes. I'm talking about like four gigabytes for every five minutes of video. Craziness. But that's what I'm using to capture. Now, I know I've heard of uh, Dick DX Story. I think that's how you say it. I'd seen an episode where XB Crafted was talking about using it. Now, the awesome thing I think about DX Story is you can record two or three different microphones. You can record game audio. All of it stays synchronized with your video, but it stays separate. So that has made me think about wanting to try DX Story, but for now I'm just going to stick with Fraps because, you know, you got to spend money on that stuff. So, oh, there goes the phone. <laughs> so with Fraps doing the capture, for all the voice, I'm using Audacity. Audacity is a open source, super easy to use, super awesome audio capture program. And if y'all don't know about it, I would encourage you to go look it up and check it out. Um, I plan on trying to contact the creator of Audacity. I want to get permission from him first. But what I'm thinking about doing is eventually doing a live stream where I'm going to show you what I do with Audacity, show you some of the tricks I use, 
just to make the audio sound better. So once I have captured my video and my audio, I've got to make all the artwork, right? Okay, so I'm using a program called GIMP, and you can find it at GIMP.org. This is also open source. It does a lot of the stuff that Photoshop does for free. You can use it. You never have to pay for it. It's open source software. So awesome. And some of y'all have noticed in some of my titles, I have a lot of 3D stuff going on. And I'm using a program called Blender. You can find that at blender.org. Blender, I'm going to be honest with you, Blender is a seriously hard program to learn. Once you know how to use it, it is one of the most awesome and powerful tools you will ever get to use. But it has an enormously steep learning curve. So if you want to get into Blender, um, you're probably going to have to start scouring YouTube to find a bunch of tutorials. And trust me, it's going to be like pulling teeth. But if you will stick with the tutorials and, and learn everything you can, you can make some seriously awesome 3D graphics. And it's free. You don't have to pirate the software. You don't have to do anything illegal. You just download it and use it. It is so cool. It has a video editor. It has a, a game engine in it. It has physics in it. It has realistic lighting and rendering. You can render out stills or movies. I mean, it's, it's a seriously awesome piece of software. Now, when I'm doing my time lapses for my video, I'm using good old movie, not move I. <laughs> movie Maker from Windows. 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 <laughs> there we go, Windows. Because I have found that Windows Movie Maker is seriously fast at taking a bunch of video and compressing it at any speed that you want quickly. Because the next piece of software I'm using is Ve Sony Vegas 13, the, uh, the Pro version, which is very expensive. It's probably the most expensive thing other than that computer that I've spent. And like I said before, I was doing video editing as a hobby for many years. So that's why I had Vegas. I'm going to be honest with you. You can do a lot of stuff with Movie Maker. I know a lot of people that only use Movie Maker, which is free. Daytime. That rules. <laughs> which is free. There's a lot of stuff you can do. There's a few things you can't do, like the little overlays of images and stuff like that. Um, and I'm actually thinking about challenging myself, trying to make an episode with only Movie Maker, just so I can show you guys all the cool stuff that you can do with it. That's for the future. So, I think that's about it. I think that's all the stuff that I use, hardware and software-wise, to make my videos. Now, yes, each of these takes art and time to learn how to use, but once you learn how to use them and use them well, you can make seriously awesome, high-quality production videos, just like Mr. Piggy. Well, at least I hope that they're higher production, after all the hours I put into them. <laughs> so, everybody just stick around. I'm going to do my quick little outro. This is what it looks like when you're filming. Watch this. So... Thank you, everybody, for who's watching this on YouTube, for taking the time to watch this live stream. I hope you learned something. I hope you were able to find out all the cool stuff I'm using, and maybe that'll give you some tips and tricks and ideas that you can use when you want to film. So thank you for watching, and I'll hope to see you each in the next live stream.